today at Cytopia, it's getting colder day by day. You're right. It would be good if we could go somewhere warmer. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Good morning. Are you ready for another expedition? Yes, sir. But please send us to a warm place. We want to feel some heat. I understand what you mean. I will turn your coordinations to Malaysia. It's not too hot and it's not too cold. I always go there during the holidays. We will go right now. Wait, wait. Can't they wait until I finish my speech? Remember, Arif, we are not here for a holiday. We're on a mission. Today, we will collect information about heat. Heat is a form of energy. We can feel heat, but we cannot see it. When a substance gains heat, it becomes warmer. When it loses heat, becomes cooler. That is heat. If you don't understand that, let's have a look at this activity. Look at this activity. We are heating up the water in a beaker. Now, we're using a thermometer to measure the heat of the water. Do you see? The temperature increases. Now we will take away the Bunsen burner. We will measure the temperature. As the water gets cooler, the temperature drops. As you all know, temperature is a measurement of how hot or cold a substance is. The hotter a substance is, the higher its temperature will be. The colder a substance is, the lower its temperature will be. Temperature can be measured by using a thermometer. The metric unit of a temperature is degree Celsius. Let me show you the correct technique to use a thermometer. Hold the thermometer upright at the upper part of the stem. Do not hold the bulb because heat from your hand will affect the thermometer reading. This is a beaker of water. We want to measure the temperature of the water. Therefore, immerse the bulb in the water without touching the beaker. Take the thermometer reading only when the mercury stops moving. When taking the thermometer reading, the position of the eye must be at the same level as the mercury in the thermometer. <laughs> oh, come on, Alma. We just want to play for a short while. Alma is right. We must stop for now and continue what we were doing. Oh, uh, okay then. Matter is affected by heat. It will expand when heated, but it will contract when it's cool. Let me show you. This is an iron ball. See how it can pass through the ring. Now, heat the iron ball with the Bunsen burner and try to pass the ball through the ring again. The iron ball can't pass through the ring because it has been expanded by heat. Now wait for a while 
for the ball to cool. Try passing it through the ring again. This object can pass through the ring because it has contracted. The experiment just now used matter that was solid. Now, let's use matter that is liquid. Let's have a look. In this experiment, we will heat water in a beaker. After a while, you can see that the water level in the tube rises. This shows that liquid expands when it's heated. In this experiment, we will put the heated flask with the rising water level into an empty beaker. Then, put in some ice cubes to cool the water. You can see that the water level drops. This shows that liquid contracts upon cooling. Hey there! I'm just cooling myself under this tree. As you all know, Matter that is both solid and liquid expands and contracts due to heat. How about gas? Let's have a look. In this experiment, we will put the rubber balloon onto the mouth of an empty bottle. It will look like this. Now, we will put the bottle in a beaker filled with hot water. Did you see that? The balloon inflates as this means that the air in the bottle expands when it's heated and this causes the balloon to inflate. Fill the beaker with ice cubes. After a while, you will notice the balloon will start to deflate. This means when the air is cool, it contracts and causes the balloon to deflate. Hmm. So, what do humans on Earth do? when there are problems where heat starts to expand and contract matter? Well, they don't try to fix anything, but they apply the principle of expansion and contraction to their lives. They make use of it after understanding the nature of heat. Really? Let's have a look then! Look at these railway tracks. You can see there is a gap along them. Do humans not have enough tracks to build it properly? No. These gaps allow the iron tracks to expand during hot days. This is so that the tracks don't bend. It's dangerous for a train to travel along damaged tracks. Do you see those electric cables? They are hung loosely. Do humans have so many electric cables to make them hang like this? No. These overhead electric cables are hung loosely because on a cold day, the electric cables will contract. The sagging cable will prevent them from snapping. It's dangerous for electric cables to snap. Look at these concrete slabs. They also have gaps. This means on hot days, concrete slabs can expand. The gaps allow the slabs to expand without breaking it. This is a steel bridge. If you look properly, you can see that the bridge has rollers underneath. Steel bridges are constructed on rollers because the rollers allow the bridges to expand during hot days. A ping pong ball athlete 
has made this ping pong ball dent. This dented ping pong ball can be repaired by immersing it in hot water. After a few minutes, the air inside the ball expands and pushes the ball back to its rounded shape. This is a metal bottle cap which is hard to open. To loosen the bottle cap, immerse it in hot water. The heat from the hot water will cause the bottle cap to expand. This will loosen the tight cap, making it easier to open. This glass is too hot to hold. I want to change the glass. Aha! There's a glass. I'm sure this one is cold. No! Have you not understood what we've been trying to learn this whole day? I understand. I I just wanted to do an experiment. Yeah, right. This is just an experiment. <laughs> Okay, kids. I have seen what really happens. Let's go back to Cytopia and I will give you some awesome drinks that I made. We'll, we'll meet, meet you there, sir. sir.